Welcome to our Christmas Day service. It's great to have you with us today. My name is Paul Bolter, Vicar of St Paul's Caton and St Cuthbert's over Kellett. And we've got a service of readings, of prayers and carols, and we're going to hear more of the Christmas story. And as we do that, let's begin our service with prayer and with a verse from Scripture. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Father God, we thank you for the wonder of the Christmas story. We thank you that you came down to earth to be with your people. Help us to hear this message afresh now and bring us comfort, peace and joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. We come now to a time of confession and we pause to bring before God those things that we need to ask for his forgiveness this morning. So let's take a moment of quiet together. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Church's special prayer for today, Christmas Day. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven-touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all those who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born out of natural descent, nor human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the, the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. A few days ago, it was the shortest day of the year. According to the BBC weather website, the sun came up at 8.30 in the morning, and it went down at 10 to 4 in the evening. And by my calculations, that makes a total of 7 hours, 20 minutes of daylight, which means that there were 16 hours and 40 minutes of darkness. That's about two thirds of the entire day. But for countries even further north than us, it's even darker. So Iceland on the tip of the Arctic Circle. On the shortest day, on the 21st of December, the sun came up at 11.22, and it went down at half past three, which makes a total of about four hours, seven minutes of daylight. That then means there's a lot of darkness. Darkness can be scary, not just for children, but for grown-ups as well. Whether we're in a room on our own in the dark, or out for a walk in the morning or the evening, darkness can be scary. The problem with darkness is that we can't see things. When we turn a light on in a dark room, we can see what's in that room, but it doesn't change what's in that room at all. Whether we've got the light on or the light off, the room is still the same. So when we turn the light on, the room doesn't change, but the way that we see the room changes. And the brighter the light that we shine, the clearer we can see things. So in that very dark room, if we shine a bright light, even the darkest corners will be lit up. My head torch is great for seeing things brightly. I use it for going out in the garden at night, maybe when I'm taking the bins out or taking rubbish down to the compost heap. And the first setting on the head torch is red, which I've never really understood, but then having had a think about it, I think it's for times maybe when you're out camping and you're in your tent at night and a white light might be too bright, but a red light enables you to see enough, but not to startle you. But it's mostly the white light that I use my head torch for. That enables me to see where I'm going and to help me avoid treading on any hedgehogs. And our reading at the beginning of John's Gospel about Jesus, talks about Jesus as a light. I've got it here, hopefully you can see this as well. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world, Jesus says. Without Jesus, it's as if we're in the dark. We can't really see what's around us. We don't know whether the things around us are safe or whether they're scary. Living in darkness isn't good. We need light to show us how things really are. Jesus, says John, is like a light coming into the world. Jesus comes with God's glory and he shows us what's really around us. Sometimes, though, we don't want to see things as they really are. 
We might want to hide things from other people. We might be afraid of what that light is going to show. Maybe to other people, maybe we're afraid of what it's going to show us about ourselves. Our passage talks about the fact that Jesus wasn't always welcomed. Some people didn't want to listen to him. Some people didn't want to see what was there in the light which he brought. But it's important to remember that even though the light that Jesus brings is sometimes uncomfortable, he gives the opportunity for a fresh start. Jesus comes full of grace and truth, John says in our passage. Now that truth can be uncomfortable sometimes, especially when it exposes our shortcomings. But Jesus doesn't just come with truth, he comes with grace as well. He comes with God's love and an opportunity for forgiveness when we trust in him. We're living in dark times at the moment. In the middle of winter and in the middle of lockdown, the world can seem a dark place. But Jesus has brought light into the world. The true light which gives light to everyone and everything. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your coming into this world brought light. Thank you that by that light we can see the truth of what is around us and we can see your grace and the opportunity for a fresh start. Help us to hold that light out to those around us. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Hello everyone. First of all, I'd like to wish you all a very happy Christmas. And now we are going to spend some time together praying. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful way we can talk to you and that you listen to us through our prayers. We think of those today who would have loved to have been in church on Christmas Day but aren't able to because of the current circumstances. And we thank you, God, for this way we can still meet together to worship you through this technology. Thank you that so many in our local villages celebrate Christmas Day with lights, trees, reefs and decorations. And thank you that it reminds us that you, Lord Jesus, are the light of the world. And we pray that there will be those that will even consider today what Emmanuel means. That we can know that God is with us and that can be a reality for anyone who puts their trust in you. As one of the old carols, carol says, Because you, Lord Jesus, left the glory of heaven and came to earth as a baby, you made the way possible for God and sinners like me to be reconciled. And because of this, thank you for the great hope that it brings us, which means that you were born to raise the sons of earth and born to give us second birth. So whether we have known and trusted you for many years, Lord Jesus, or for those who haven't done so yet, we pray that we all will be amazed by your great love for us at Christmas time. We ask and pray these things in the name of our Saviour Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the world at this time. It feels strange right now and the news is full of the coronavirus. We pray for the people who are worried they may get ill and anxious for their family members and friends. Be very close to them and help them find peace. We pray for the hospital staff, doctors and nurses who are all working to help those who are ill and the scientists who have created a vaccine to help stop the spread of the virus. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. Thank you that even in these sanctuous times you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray for our family and friends this Christmas time who we won't be able to see. We pray that you will keep them safe and that it won't be long before we can meet up. Please help us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, just like you have taught us. Be close to those who are ill, isolating, anxious or lonely. Be their hope and ensure them of your love and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the work of the food banks. Thank you for those people who give up their time to collect the food and distribute the food parcels to those in need. Help us to be generous this Christmas time and to think of those less fortunate than ourselves. Please give us a giving heart, a generous heart and a grateful heart. Thank you for all the many blessings you have given us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, as we celebrate your birthday this Christmas time, we want to thank you, God, that you sent Jesus, even though it was over 2,000 years ago. Help us to want to share this good news with others, just as the shepherds did after seeing you in the stable. Help us to remember the real reason for the season. God of comfort and joy, may we know your presence with us today and bring your gentle, joyful love to others this Christmas and always. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us for our service today. We hope you've enjoyed it. And let me wish you a happy Christmas and a peaceful new year. And we close our service now with the words of the blessing. May the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the god bearer give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks and praise to God. Amen.